at the U.S. State Department, foreign ambassadors, American diplomats, and others listened to the world premiere of a remarkable piece of music. It was a piano work by Polish composer and Holocaust survivor Leon Kazmarek. The music speaks to individual resistance and the goal of maintaining one's own humanity in the midst of degradation. This unnamed set of piano variations on a Polish patriotic theme were composed by Leon Kazmarek while he was prisoner in the Dachau concentration camp and have never been heard in public before. The significance of this moment is not lost on the performer, Nicholas Binyas Harris. My maternal grandmother and her parents were on Schindler's list, so they were Holocaust survivors. And I think it definitely uh, closes my connection to this piece that I have relatives who were victims of the Holocaust, but who eventually survived and were able to tell their story. Research has uncovered a wide variety of compositions, which were on rare occasions even performed in secret during stolen moments in the camps, including popular songs with subversive themes, such as this tune about the camp gate. The will to survive can stimulate brutality or it can stimulate creativity. And these, these composers and musicians really embody the best of the human response possible. They become our teachers, in our opinion. The phenomenon has recently revived greater attention from historians and musicians, including a recently published book called Forbidden Music, The Jewish Composers Banned by the Nazis, written by Michael Haas. I think the very beginning part shows the Jewish struggle, and the rest of it is kind of a subtle stab at the Nazis with the Polish patriotic theme because the Nazis were trying to create um, one giant powerful Germany and by taking pride in both his Jewish and Polish ancestry he was able to combat them. The songs and melodies written in secret notebooks and on scraps of paper can now function as a source of inspiration for a new generation. That we can build bridges between people by focusing on our common humanity Perhaps the music created during the Holocaust can inspire us to see a world that can move past hate. And the music, to some degree, speaks for the millions who perished. The debut of this lost music of the Holocaust here at the U.S. State Department is just one effort to archive, transcribe, and perform these recovered works of music. Scholars in France, Italy, and here in Washington are still building their archives, hoping to preserve this lost music. This is Priscilla Huff for JN1 in Washington.